Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be reviewing and ranking all of Riley Sager's books. So for anyone who doesn't know, Riley Sager is a pretty popular thriller author, especially on booktube, and I think he's most well known for being very divisive and very hit or miss, so people either seem to love his books or hate them, and I fall somewhere in the middle <laughs> because some of his books I've absolutely loved, and then others I have absolutely hated, <laughs> and I don't think there's any other thriller author out there that I feel that way about, so I thought it would be quite interesting to sit down and film a ranking video where I talk through all of the books of his that I've read. I've actually read all six of his books that he currently has published. I thought it might be quite interesting to sit down and just talk through the books of his that I loved and talk about the books of his that I hated and which of his books that I would personally recommend. Obviously you don't have to listen to me, <laughs> but I thought it would be a fun video anyway. <laughs> Generally speaking though, what I do like about Riley Sager's books is the way that his books feel like a movie. So I would say that they're quite plot driven and by that what I mean is that his main characters aren't always likeable and they are often very frustrating and they make decisions that I don't always understand. <laughs> what I'd actually really like is for Riley Sager to write a book that has a man as a main character because I think it would be really interesting for me to see whether I feel the same way about a man written by Riley Sager as I do about his female main characters. One thing that I do always appreciate about Riley Sager's books though is the way that he plots the twists within his books. So I don't think I've yet read a Riley Sager book where I haven't been surprised and sometimes I'm surprised in a bad way <laughs> but generally speaking I get to the end of his books and I'm shocked because I did not see the endings come in. And as someone who reads a lot of thrillers and who's familiar with a lot of the popular thriller tropes, I do really enjoy that. I like that I can rely on Riley Sager to deliver something different. So those are just some general thoughts that I have on Riley Sager's books, but I'm now going to move on to the actual rankings. And I don't know whether Last Place is actually going to be a surprise, because I feel like this is actually one of his more popular books, and it was actually the first book that he published, but that is Final Girls. This follows a woman called Quincy who's known in the press for being a final girl. So when she was younger she went away to this cabin with some friends and there was this massacre and she was the only survivor. So it's kind of like that horror movie trope where, you know when you're watching a horror movie and you get to the end and quite often there's one person left alive and it's usually a woman. So the press have kind of caught on to this and there are three women who they talk about quite a lot and who they describe as being final girls. So Quincy is one of them and then there's also a woman called Samantha which is my name and then there's also Lisa who was the original final girl and at the start of the book Quincy finds out that Lisa has died and Samantha gets in touch with Quincy and says that she thinks they need to support each other and help each other out because they're the only person who knows what the other person is going through. As you get further into the book, Quincy starts to suspect that maybe there was more to Lisa's death than was originally thought. When I describe it like that, it actually sounds quite interesting, <laughs> but the main issue that I had with this book was that it was so boring in the beginning, and I didn't like the main character. She was just so frustrating, and a lot of her actions weren't making any sense. <laughs> this is also one of the few Riley Sager books where I actually predicted quite early on something that was later revealed towards the end and I didn't guess everything so that I guess is a positive. I mean the ending to this was wild. I think that if you like a thriller that has a lot of drama and that really goes for that shock factor then maybe you would enjoy this more than I did but by the time I got to the end and by the time that things started to actually happen I just I'd 
kind of given up and I checked it out. So yeah, I ended up giving this one two stars. Even though this was the first book that Riley Sager published, it was actually one of the more recent books of his that I've read. And I'm kind of glad because I think if I'd read this one first, then I would have been a bit more hesitant to pick up his later books. So moving on to fifth place. And in fifth place, we actually have Riley Sager's newest release, which is House Across the Lake. So this book starts off feeling like a very generic domestic thriller because it's following a woman called Casey who lives in New York. However, her family have this vacation home in Vermont, which is basically this house that overlooks this beautiful lake. And about 14 months ago, her husband died. He actually drowned in this lake. And following that, Casey's life started to spiral out of control. So her mum turns around to her and says, you need to get out of the city, go away to this vacation home and just sort yourself out. So <laughs> straight away I was thinking, why is this a good idea? Because she's going back to this same place that her husband died. Yeah, so basically right at the start of the book, Casey saves one of her neighbours from drowning. And not long after this woman, Catherine, goes missing. You learn this in the very first chapter, so it's not a spoiler. And Casey becomes obsessed with trying to find out what happened to Catherine. And she suspects that the husband was involved. So yeah, it does sound like a very generic domestic thriller. But the main problem that I had with this book was the ending. So similar to Final Girls, it started off feeling very generic generic and I was quite bored. I mean there were a few moments that were very tense and I do think actually that Riley Sager does write tension and suspense quite well but by the time I got to near the end it just started going in this very random direction. It's quite funny actually because I thought I'd predicted what was going to happen and then I'd half predicted something. I mean maybe not even half predicted. I'd a quarter predicted something that was going to happen. But then I, yeah, I didn't like the ending to this. I mean, it was entertaining, but it was entertaining because it was bad. I don't want to say specifically what it was that I didn't like. A few reviews that I've seen on Goodreads have talked about a certain element that's introduced, but I don't want to say what it is just in case some people would consider that spoilery. Obviously, I knew about it going into the book and I don't feel like it did impact on my enjoyment, but I just, I didn't like the ending to this book. A lot of it didn't make sense. A lot of it felt very convenient and I think that if you like realistic thrillers then I wouldn't recommend this one at all. I gave this one two stars as well, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Okay so moving on to fourth place and in fourth place is Survive the Night which I, okay, I enjoyed Survive the Night. I gave it I think 3.5 stars. I know that a lot of people really really hated it and I can see why because I do agree with all of the criticisms of this book but I thought it was entertaining. <laughs> so in this book we're following our main character Charlie and the book is set in the 90s, I probably should have mentioned that, but Charlie is going through a very difficult time at the moment because her roommate and best friend was recently killed by this serial killer that's been terrorising the campus and Charlie decides that she needs to go home, she needs to get away and she's at this bulletin board in her college and she meets a guy who happens to be travelling in the same direction direction as her. So they agree to ride share, but not long after they set off, Charlie begins to suspect that this guy is actually this campus killer. Okay, so I just had to delete some stuff from my memory card, but hopefully the camera angle hasn't changed too much. But what I liked about this book was the tension and the suspense and the isolated setting and how a lot of the plot takes place within this car where you're seeing Charlie's thoughts and how scared she is and how she's trying to work out whether this guy really is a killer. I really liked that it had a slow build up and then the ending was just wild. <laughs> it felt like a 90s slasher film and so as I was watching it, as I was watching it, as I was reading it, I could picture exactly how it would play out as a movie. Like I said though, I do understand why it has such a low average rating on Goodreads because uh, so how do I say this? Like there were certain elements that I wish hadn't been included. The main character Charlie has these hallucinations 
emotions that play like movies in her mind and I always find the unreliable narrator trope very hit or miss. I don't think it worked very well in this book. I actually think that if you'd taken out that aspect then this book could have potentially been a five stars for me. This was another one of his books that was a little bit predictable but I still didn't predict everything so I really appreciated that and I gave this one 3.5 stars. I don't know if I've said that already. So moving on to the top half of the table and in third place we have The Last Time I Lied. Now this follows a woman called Emma. I read this quite recently so it's still quite fresh in my mind but this follows a woman called Emma who I think she's now in her late 20s but when she was 13 she went away to this summer camp for the summer and while she was there her three roommates went missing and no one ever found out what happened to them. In the present day Emma has been invited to go back to this summer camp to work as a counsellor. So the summer camp has been closed all of these years after what happened, but it's finally ready to reopen. And so it's that trope where you're following this main character as she goes back to the, the scene of the crime to investigate and confront what actually happened back then. I think this would be a really good book to read over the summer because it has that warm weather setting and it's set at a summer camp. I don't think I've actually read many books that have a summer camp setting. I know that it is quite a popular setting and that there are plenty of thrillers out there that are set at summer camps but I haven't read any of them so this to me did feel unique. There were so many little twists throughout the book and especially towards the end I did not see the ending come in. Even up until the last chapter it was still keeping me guessing. <laughs> so even though it's not my favourite Riley Sager book it is one that I would actively recommend. Okay so now we get on to the top two <laughs> and I really struggled to decide which book I wanted to put in first and which book I wanted to put in second because I gave both of these five stars and I would recommend them both but the book that I'm putting in second place is Lock Every Door. So this follows a woman called Jules who's just been given her dream job and it sounds too good to be true because basically she's going to be an apartment sitter so there's this huge old building in New York called the Bartholomew, I can remember its name, and there's a lot of famous people that live here, a lot of rich and famous people, and they have been hiring apartment sitters to basically come in and stay in the empty apartments and look after them until they become occupied again. It, it sounds weird, but it does make sense once you start reading it. Although what Jules soon finds out is that if something sounds too good to be true, then it probably is, <laughs> because not long after she arrives, she meets one of the other apartment sitters and they become friends and this girl turns around to her and says that there's something dodgy going on in this building and then she disappears. So it's all about Jules trying to find out what happened to her friend and trying to uncover the secret behind this building and the people that live there. Jules is in a really desperate situation and I did appreciate the way that that was written into the story. So so basically you find out at the start of the book that Jules's boyfriend has been cheating on her and that's why she's had to move out and that's why she's desperate to find somewhere to live. And so even though some of the decisions that she made I didn't quite understand because it's not what I would have done but also I've never been in that situation and I did feel that her desperation really came across in the writing. The tension and the suspense was so so good and I'm pretty sure that I read this in one sitting because I literally couldn't put it down <laughs> and when I got to the end I did feel like maybe I could have predicted what direction it was going to go in but because this was actually the first Riley Sager book that I'd ever read I think I just I was so shocked <laughs> because it didn't even occur to me to think that that could have been what was going to happen. So yeah I actually just checked on Goodreads and I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think just because there were a few little things that felt a bit overly dramatic but this was a wild ride and like I said I would really recommend this one. It felt very unique. So if you're familiar with Riley Sager books then you've probably already guessed that my favourite Riley Sager book so far is Home Before Dark. I think what I liked most about this book was that it's a book within a book. So we follow our main character Maggie who when she was a kid she lived in this house but only for I 
think, something like two weeks, but then her family fled and claimed that the house was haunted, and her dad actually wrote a book about their experience, which ended up becoming a bestseller. Maggie has always suspected that her family were lying about what happened back then, but her father has just died, and she's found out that she's actually inherited this house, which she wasn't expecting because she thought that her parents sold this house years and years ago. Maggie actually works as a restorer of old homes, and so when she finds out that she's inherited this house, she decides to go back there and renovate it and do it up with the intention of finally selling it on. However, when she arrives, spooky stuff starts to happen, and she starts to question whether she was right or whether her father was right, and the house is actually haunted. Yeah, so you have some chapters that are set in the present day where you're following Maggie, but then you also have chapters that are taken from her dad's book. So it's that trope where you're trying to work out, is it paranormal or is there a more human explanation for what's going on? And I really liked the twists in this book. I thought that the tension was done really well. And I mean, I did not know <laughs> what was going to happen in this book. I liked that there were so many twists throughout the book. And so it constantly surprised me and it constantly shocked me. There's just something about a haunted house setting that really appeals to me. <laughs> I think that if you liked the TV show The Haunting of Hill House, then I would recommend this one. And also if you liked The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware, then I think you would like this one too, because I mean, it's that similar trope where you're following a main character in a spooky house and all of this spooky stuff is going on. I think this would be a really good one to read around Halloween. So yeah, that does bring me to to the end of this video. Thanks for watching if you've made it this far. If you've read any of Riley Sager's books then let me know in the comments if you agree with the order that I've placed them in or if you have a different favourite or a different least favourite. And if you haven't read Riley Sager's books then let me know which of his books you think would be the one that you'd most like to pick up. But otherwise don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Bye!